we're keeping the beat with Curtis Nosad today. And uh, Curtis, you are very much in demand, very loved. Do you feel very needed because you're a busy man for the Jazz Fest this year? I don't know about needed, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe wanted. I'll go with wanted. Just how many gigs are you playing? Uh, I'm playing nine at the festival. And pretty diverse. I mean, one of the things that I find really interesting about being a jazz drummer is that uh, you have to be able to play very, you know, soulful, slow music. You also need to do, deal with a lot of time changes and, and all those things and be able to fill those very well. So what does it take to be a successful drummer in the jazz world? Uh, wow. Um, well, one of the big things is command of the instrument, obviously, and... Uh, and respect for the tradition as well, you know, checking out as much music as you possibly can. And especially now, that extends out, you know, way beyond jazz to other styles of music as well. I mean, I, you know, play rock gigs and hip hop gigs and I played a country gig on the weekend. Like, this, you know, there's, there's all kinds of different things, but then all that stuff can inform, you know, what you can draw from when you're playing with people. Because, uh, you know, because everyone kind of has their own unique sound and everything that they're drawing from, so you need to be able to communicate with them as best as you can. So. You are headed into a new, uh, a new journey in jazz. Can you tell us a little bit about that and where you see yourself in a couple of years? Yeah, well, I, um, I'm going to be starting my master's at Manhattan School of Music uh, starting in the fall. So my, my wife and I are moving down uh, for the next couple of years. And uh, yeah, then, then at the end, we'll see what happens, whether, whether we'll be back or, I mean, we'll obviously be back. You know, I've been here, you know, I've said to people, I've been here too long and been too involved in the community to just like disappear and never come back and be involved in anyone's projects again. So, I mean, especially even this coming summer, I'm sure I'll be sure I'll be around. But, uh, How do you see your drumming, uh, your, your musicianship evolving when you, when you head down to do your masters? Well, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I am really looking forward to working with John Riley, who will be my, my private teacher at, mm -hmm. at Manhattan School of Music, and just being around all the music that's in New York. So I really see just, you know, really real, like, broadening of musical knowledge and as well tightening everything up, as, <laughs> as we're always trying to do. How did, you, how did you decide that jazz was your thing? Uh, well, it was kind of really good timing. Um, I was in, you know, I always played in jazz band at school. I went to Charles Wood Junior High and then uh, Silver Heights Collegiate after that. And, um, and so I, I had always played in jazz band at school and then the timing was really good because uh, Steve Kirby moved to town kind of right when I was, right, I guess I was in grade 10. And, uh, and I had just sort of, you know, I actually played in a rock band with a guy who also played jazz saxophone. So I sort of like, had like a little taste of playing and then Kirby came and, and started the Monday Night Hang. So then I started going there every single week and you know the first time I sat in I played half a tune and got kicked off the drums by an older drummer. <laughs> <laughs> it humbles you though, right? Oh, of course, of course. And, in, and within a couple of years I was in the house band and so that's, and you know that jam session is still going on Wednesday nights at, at the Orbit Room. Yeah, um, you know, uh, obviously Steve Kirby, as you mentioned, he's been a big part of developing the community mm -hmm. of jazz in the city. I mean, you uh, you did a, a show at Aqua Books just before it closed mm -hmm. down, and uh, that's a venue that we're still waiting to see if it will exist right. again. Uh, let's first of all talk a little bit about the compilation that came out of Aqua Books, but then also just what what else do we need to do to have a, a bigger, better jazz community? Well, the, the biggest thing is uh, the biggest thing is to go out and hear the music, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Thankfully, we have uh, Dig Magazine, which is a great resource for finding out, you know, what what all is happening. Um, so that's a really big one. As far as the the compilation, I'm really, you know, we are, like I said, we are waiting to see, um, you know, what's happening with with Aquabooks. But, uh, you know, either way, we still we recorded this this compilation. That room sounded fantastic, yeah. and we uh, we recorded this this live album in there. And I'm really you know, glad. Regardless of, of what happens with the venue, I'm really happy uh, that I could showcase, you know, a big chunk of the, the jazz community that way. And it, it's all original music, so everyone is everyone has contributed a tune. Um, and yeah, it's just really great to hear. Everyone played great, you know, and I had been sitting on it to see what was going to happen with the venue, and now that I'm leaving town, I sort of get it out, and I'm really happy that I am because uh, there's some really good music. 
Well, that's reflective of, of needing places to for, for jazz musicians mm -hmm. to gather as well, right? Which is an important part of growing the community. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish you all the best in New York. What Thank an incredible much. journey that'll be, and uh, and have a great jazz festival. Thank you.